Boo, 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 boo. Hello everybody, welcome back to the game room. These devices I have around me are nothing more than molded pieces of plastic with electronics shoved into them, but some are more appealing to the eye than others. It may seem like a trivial thing, but these companies put a lot of thought into the physical appearance of their devices. Today I'm going to present to you what I think are the 10 best looking consoles of all time, according to me. And I'm talking about ones you can hook up to a TV, so I won't be doing the handhelds in this video. Even though I put a lot of thought into this, ultimately, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And you may have some that didn't make this list that you think should have, so let me know what those are. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get this beauty pageant on the road. Number 10 is the Atari 5200. The Atari 5200 is one of the biggest consoles to ever exist, size-wise. That makes it challenging to display on a shelf, but I can't deny it has an aesthetically pleasing look. Its overall shape is like a ramp, like the ones you go over with your bicycle. Within that flatness is a variety of rectangular design cues that complement one another. The black strips, the silver strips, and the vertical grooves. It's not too shabby. Overall, it's a very handsome system. Number 9 is the Game Wave. I bet less than 1% of you know what a Game Wave is. It was a failed Canadian console slash DVD player hybrid that attempted to tap into the casual crowd. While it didn't work out, the console looks pretty good in my opinion. There's two pieces, the main system and a case that holds the remotes. When they're put together, they form a wave. I guess you might call it a Game Wave. The disc tray itself has a wave pattern to it as well. All that combined with the smooth silver appearance makes this a sleek looking system. Number 8 is the Wii, the original model. A vertically positioned Wii is very fun to look at. This is starting to get a little weird. The gray base complements the overall bright white appearance. It's simple looking, and I think that's intentional. They didn't want to scare off soccer moms with a lot of fancy buttons. The most striking element is how it's angled backward. That gives it a very sturdy appearance. All of you out there should consider getting your Wii out and taking a look. Well, there goes my chance of running for office. Number 7 is the PS4 Pro. The original PS4 has a cool looking vertical gap going across the slanted facing. It looks decent, but then the PS4 Pro came out with two gaps on the front. I don't know what it is, but it looks appealing. Maybe on a subconscious level, I feel like I'm getting three systems for the price of one. It comes in black and it comes in white, but either one looks amazing. I don't know if anyone has done it yet, but someone needs to stack a bunch of PS4 Pros in a staggered way, so it's one continuous ramp of grooves. If such a display was in a museum, I'd pay to see it. Number 6 is the NES, the original model. The NES was designed to look and function a little bit like a VCR to appeal to the American market. I even remember people calling the games tapes. Like, hey Kevin, did you play that new Nintendo tape? Seriously, I heard things like that back then. The NES looks far better than any VCR. The front face has a lot going on, with a mixture of white, gray, black, and red. It matches up with the controller. Though it is a lot smaller than I remember. The power and reset buttons are enticing to push, due to how far they come out. My judgment may be affected by nostalgia, but this system has a one-of-a-kind appearance and I love it. Number 5 is the Genesis Model 1. When I first saw images of the Genesis in magazines, my heart skipped a beat. It's like they had probed my mind to figure out what I would want a new system to look like. Over time, my opinion hasn't changed that much, though I find it hard to explain what makes this system look so cool. It seems to give off a sense of power. The central feature is a circular dome which protrudes out of a very flat body. The dome kind of gives the impression that there's pent up energy inside kind of like the early stages of a Jiffy Pop. It makes any games inserted into it stand out. Also, the 16-bit and Genesis stencils are dramatically presented and further drive home the power motif. You're quite a looker, Mr. Genesis. 
Number four is the PS1, the original model. Sony's first foray into the console business was a major success, and it's reasonable to assume that its elegant look had something to do with it. It has a flat profile, a little more than two inches tall. This makes it seem strong and heavy. The height is evenly distributed along the entire rectangle, so it looks kind of like a birthday cake. A shape that's easy on the eyes. Integrated within it all are perfect circles of the CD lid and the reset power and open buttons, a motif that continues with the controller. You did good, Sony. You did good. Number three is the Intellivision. Many people consider the Intellivision controllers a failure in ergonomics. However, few can deny that when the system is sitting on a shelf or a coffee table with those controllers tucked into the compartments, it's quite an elegant look. Despite having come out in the Crustaceous period, this thing looks very modern with silver and black elements complementing each other. The number pad and the silver discs on the controller makes one want to just pick it up and start pushing things. It's just a nice, tidy rectangle. The wood grain strips make it even better. All in all, Mattel really hit a home run when it comes to this design. Number two is the Xbox One X Robot White Special Edition. The Xbox One had many variations, but there's one I find breathtaking. The One X Robot White Special Edition. Every time it comes across my eyes, I feel myself paused for a few seconds. I'm serious. It looks sturdy, like if I pushed it, it would not move. The white strip is smooth looking and it stands out majorly against the black. Overall, it's a simple and pleasing design and I find it very calming to look at. Number one is the Atari 2600 Heavy Sixer. The 2600 had many beautiful revisions over the years, but the very first model was the most attractive. It's called the Heavy Sixer because it's heavy and has six switches along the top. The standout feature is the beautiful wood grain piece along the front. It's not real wood, but it's the best looking and most memorable wood grain element of any system out there. I especially like how the black curves around it. Another point of beauty is the large section of horizontal ribs that cover most of the top. It's intriguing to see and it's fun to touch. And I'm happy to see this element has made its way to some of the clone systems as a tribute to the 2600. At the top are cool looking rod switches sticking out of oval slots. They are symmetrically aligned with the cartridge slot. Even after 40 plus years, the Atari 2600 still looks hot. So those were the best looking game systems, but what systems do I think are most playable today? I ranked 84 of them from first to last in the video you see linked on the screen right there. May your games make you happy and smart, and may people respect you for playing them. So long everybody!